Hello again guys, it is username Kate and welcome back to my channel. So I've been lucky enough to get my hands on the 2022 Triumph Tiger Sport 660. So this ride is going to be my initial impressions. Tight bend coming up. Swing it in, swing it in. So as I was saying, this ride is going to be my first ride impressions, my first impressions review, play into the algorithms. And I have to say so far, I'm really enjoying this bike. <laughs> So last year I was quite fortunate enough to ride the Trident 660. So this is a roadster that Triumph brought out, you know, 80 horsepower, triple engine, because before that you kind of really had the street triples and to be quite frank, the street triples for, you know, people that are learning or maybe or maybe have ridden for a while, but you know, want something a bit calmer. The Street Triple didn't really fill that gap because to be quite frank, I owned one. Dead thing. And it's a bit of an animal. So I believe that the Trident proved a huge success. And naturally, you know, Triumph assessed the market and found That there was a gap in it for an adventure sport, but utilising that same engine. So I have already done a initial walk round where I sit on this uh, Tiger Sport and you can see how it is for size. I detail a lot of the specification on there over the bridge. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out. I'll attach a link somewhere up here. Same Revy engine as the Trident 660. Really nice and Revy, really sporty feeling. It's quite a, an aggressive sounding adventure sport. Yep. Don't mind my indicator, love. And the competitors of this Tiger Sport 660 are of course parallel twins. You've got the Yamaha's Tracer 700, you've got the Kawasaki Versus 650. Oh, it's telling me to swing here. Woo. And I think that, you know, triple sportier offering it's quite a nice touch by triumph i mean obviously there's going to be characteristic differences a parallel twin in the competitors has a lot of that low down grunt that sort of instant torque where the triple it does perform you know a little bit better when it's singing higher in the rev range now i haven't ridden its competitors but i know the characteristics of a parallel twin quite well because when I used to work selling BMW motorcycles obviously they had their F900 XR and R range so even though they have 100 horsepower you know even this feels like it's kind of got a little bit more spice at the top probably down to that engine characteristic You know what, it, it might seem like I'm being antisocial, but I'm actually staying within the limits here. But you can shuck it around so well. The bars, compared to the Trident, you've got two centimeters extra. 
total so centimeter aside it's just nice for that you know leverage when you're counter steering and you're pushing on the bars it's, it's quite nice i do like a wide bar oh look at that i've heard that's the dead center of this town so i'm currently taking you on a little route to southport it's been a long long time since i've gone to southport so i've got my ultimate add-ons little uh, universal mount which is holding my phone i always think you should nod at you know people with valve plates on scooters because it's encouraging isn't it the screen you can push it down with one hand you can pull it up with one hand i'll keep it down for the purpose of this video because you guys know i don't really like looking through screens snip round it all I ain't got a bike to sit in all this see if I can squeeze in somewhere yeah no dramas quite a lot of traffic today I think I might have come at school time so first impressions when riding it lovely riding position I'm nice and upright I think I might have got accustomed to the adventure bike life where I'm very upright and it's it's just become my preferred way of riding i like you know i don't like being hunched over i'm not hunched over in the slightest i have a nice a nice bend in my leg it's not too cramped and it certainly does feel a bit more spacious than the trident but i think that might be because you've got like 35 mil extra from the seat to the peg so you really do feel that and it is nice comfort wise you know what it is a bit of a firm seat but one of them firm seats that i think will actually be all right they not be too bad so what have we got we've got two riding modes we have a road we have a rain the rain just, you know, softens the throttle response a little bit. It is ride by wire. And obviously road mode is just road mode. You don't have sort of a sport mode on this or anything. Just two modes. You've got switchable traction control. So you can switch it off if you want. If you want to be doing skids and wheelies and all that jazz. The dash. Now the dash is lovely. At the top you have a TFT which is like a, a black and white and then you've got a little bit of colour popping on the screen below it that's where you can choose all your menu settings and stuff like that we've got a good old tank size 17.2 litres that's a good 3.2 litres up on the trident which is great you know i would have hoped to have seen a bigger tank on a bike that is focused more on long haul journeys tours etc so i did a little bit of riding on the motorway to where i started the camera it rides comfortably at 70 mile an hour the vibrations that you feel are what you'd expect from quite a high revving middleweight triple nothing intrusive nothing uncomfortable nothing that you think bloody hell this is like going to give me cramp in the hands or anything like that nothing nothing really through the bars nothing through the pegs so with this bike being an adventure sport there are a few things what i think people kind of expected it to have a standard which it doesn't so the bike does not come with heated grips as standard if you want to put heated grips on it you can spec it that way but it's going to cost you 205 pounds thankfully this press bike has been specced with heated grips so you know i've just put it in the third setting saying it's quite chilly today it doesn't come with a center stand and it also doesn't come with cruise control However, 
I'm pretty sure that's comparable to its competitors and it is built to a price it starts at 8450 now that is pretty good and of course this bike has got the little grooves in the back to accommodate panniers and you can put a top box on it now I am going to do a whole separate video about accessories almost like I did with the Trident video and just let you know what accessories you can put on this thing wow look at that little beauty spot gorge wow I know there's a speed camera around this corner because there was a time when I didn't know there was a speed camera around this corner <laughs> thankfully you didn't get me but it does very much just creep up on you so how am I finding this power wise? we've got 80 horsepower and it's taking me back to my like SV650 and KTM 690 days you know that kind of power but it's fun, you know, on the road, absolutely plenty. You've got enough to get you past traffic when you're like trying to do overtakes and stuff on country lanes. You've just got to, you know, tell it to go. I mean, my preferred amount of power on the road, which is like my sweet spot, is about 125 brake horsepower. I know it differs for like everyone, some people are happy with you know bloody 60 some people want 200 make sure she saw me then but for me yeah 125 is a sweet spot but 80 i can still have loads of fun on 80 brake horsepower so with the screen in the lowest position i went on the motorway and i didn't experience any buffeting or anything like that and that's with it in the lowest setting maybe i need to try it with it in its high setting just to see if anything changes oh wow i'm not, not i'm not going to try and filter here bloody hell i ain't got a death wish yeah so i found the screen perfectly adequate when it's down but again i am five foot four and i do have quite a short torso I'm kind of, my ratio, I'm more leg than I am body. And it suits me fine. Genuinely no complaints there. To stand up, it's wonderful. It's comfy. So if you want to stretch your legs after a bit of a long ride, you can do that absolutely no dramas how does it handle well i'd like to get on some bloody good roads and show you but i think my sat nav must have pre-found the world's most boring route what on earth are you stopping for it's a freaking roundabout that is not the side that you give way to, buddy. The handling of it is really light. You know, just a flickable. It moves easy. I suppose one of the confidence inspiring things about this is that it comes with the Michelin Road 5 tyres. Which, I think all you have to do is type into Google Michelin 5 or Michelin Road 5 tyre review. And there's not many people that have a bad thing to say but i tell you what so i'm filming this video on the first of march spring has sprung baby it's lovely you know it's a little bit cold but i'm wrapped up right so yeah so far this bike is ticking a hell of a lot of boxes for me riding position so comfy power manageable yet not boring i'm not bored 
when you want it to scream there's something quite tantalizing about a triple engine and maybe that's what kind of keeps it interesting it's, it's not a dull engine signs for southport that is where we are heading get an ice cream mirrors what do i have to say about the mirrors pretty good to be fair quite big so if you kind of like style over substance maybe get some like bar and mirrors or something like that because these are quite chunky but they don't look out of proportion with the bike aesthetically they, they in keeping with the look and yeah they just they offer you a lot you see a lot slow control on it really really easy because the clutch is nice and smooth it's not a jerky bike the throttle's smooth as well there's no surging no nastiness i certainly feel like this is a this is a bike it's priced good 8450 not only is it priced good yeah that's not the new highway cord rule love I know you might think it is, but it's really not. I feel like she's trying to do the right thing by the highway code, but that's not how it works. You know what, actually, while I'm on the subject of highway code, what do you guys think about these new changes? Personally, for a biker, I think they're bloody ridiculous and I think they're bloody dangerous. Because if you think about it, if you're riding along a road like this and you want to turn left and there's somebody at that exact same time a pedestrian waiting to cross that little side road that you're about to enter you have to give way you have to stop just stop well that's fine as a biker you're paying attention and you can see that the person in front is abiding by the highway code but what you don't account for is the dozy Dilbert behind you that's either on his phone or hasn't clicked that you've stopped because a car in front of you stopped and boom you get rear-ended right up the chuff i just think it's stupid it made perfect sense before if i'm a pedestrian crossing a road i i respect that i'm going into car bike van territory i look both ways i go and it's clear same when I'm riding my motorcycle up onto my drive and I'm crossing a pavement. If I can see that there's pedestrians in their territory, in their sort of space, I'll let them pass. It makes sense. Now it doesn't make sense. Nice. Tracker. Ooh. Not a fan of them big wheels. This is where all the bikers meet. Oh, I don't know. Just go here. So I pulled up at Southport, and by the time I got my ice cream, there's no bugger left except one bike. Oh, we've got another one. But yeah, I got my ice cream. I actually said to the guy, I said, um, what ice creams have you got that are vanilla? He said, well, we've got a whippy one and we've got just like a normal one. I said, oh, well, what would you recommend? He went, neither, to be honest, love. So yeah, good luck with this. So yeah, we're all parked up. So as I'm eating this, doesn't quite taste right. Kind of tastes sour like the ice cream's turning, like it's gone off. And I had to buddy remortgage to get it, so I'm kind of begrudging wasting it. But also, I'm lactose intolerant as it is. So there's lactose intolerant and then there's off lactose. So I think we all, could you be any noisier? I think we all need to say a prayer for Mike tonight. Yeah, I can't eat this, it's gonna make me ill. Right guys, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up. It's really cold, as you can probably tell by my red nose. Rudolph Ralph, hello, she makes an appearance again. 
But yeah, I'm really enjoying this bike so far. The Triumph Tiger Sport 660. So far, it's proven to be a pretty fun bike. What do you guys think of it? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And yeah, I can't wait to put more miles on this bike, get riding it more, and really form a, a proper, you know, well-rounded opinion of this bike. But yeah, if you've taken the time to watch this video to the end, thank you very much. And until the next time, take care, ride safe, and see you soon. Bye.